as we look at our photograph, we see that there's this kind of grassy stuff and mossy stuff all kind of intermingled together. And we're going to try to take some, we're going to do an intentional, an intentional thing now with our paints and our colors and our brush strokes because the detail of the grass right in front here is the greatest detail in the whole painting. And for that reason, we're going to take some liberties uh, to tie the beach in with everything that's behind it here. First things first, I'm going to recommend that we clean off our mixing surface. Clean off your pool area so that we're not going to be contaminating. Now, I'm not saying that you got to wash it with mineral spirits or anything, but just get, a, just get all that excess paint you can with your palette knife. Don't worry about doing a perfect job. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we're just eliminating some of what could contaminate some very clean colors that we're going to put in. I'm going to recommend that when we do the grass, we're going to go to back to our number eight. We're going to go back to a large filbert's brush, and I'm going to show you the magic stroke that is your grassness stroke. <laughs> we're going to want to do grassness. And the magic stroke is a stroke that works for sky, it works for grass, uh, it works for modeling uh, contours in a portrait or a figure or a dog or a horse, uh, modeling edges and whatnot. The magic stroke has a lot of uses. Now, to demonstrate the magic stroke, I'm just going to take this panel and I'm going to share some things, some aspects or details or or some of the characteristics of the magic stroke. Number one, you cannot do the magic stroke holding your pen like, or holding your, your brush like you hold your pen or pencil when you're writing or, or drawing like this. You can only do the magic stroke when you hold your paintbrush the way an artist should hold their paintbrush most of the time. That's not like this, but like this. When you hold your brush like this, you're able to get a very deep, or very, very shallow angle with your handle. When you're holding the brush like this, you see the brush is perpendicular to the surface of the painting. You want to get down very, very low as far as a low degree angle from the surface. Another thing, kind of like what I was talking to you about before, we're not going to use the flat of the brush and we're not going to use the knife edge of the brush. We're going to use somewhat of a three quarter inch view three-quarter angle. And then we're going to use somewhat of an up and down motion. Now the magic stroke is a stroke that I stumbled on when I was doing a rather large painting that had really tall grass in it. <laughs> and I just, <laughs> and the light went on. And I like, look how I, look how I did that. You know, and what you're doing is you're going to be doing there's, there's a certain pressure that you need on the bristle of the brush, a certain angle, and a certain amount of paint on your brush, and a certain amount that's on the painting already. It's kind of like a violin. You know, your, the bowl on the violin has to be a certain tightness, at a certain angle, at a certain speed, and all these things put together to make a, a nice sound. The magic stroke is a little bit like that. A certain amount of paint, a certain angle, a certain distance, and you, it's a sort of a light scrubbing stroke. It's not just a down stroke, it's not just an up stroke. It's down, up, down, up, down, up. But look at what happens to the direction of the handle of the brush. You go with the direction that you're pointing, and you do it multiple times. So with the right angle, the right pressure, the right amount of paint, we do this scrubby stroke. Now on your table, I'd just like for you to just get a feel. Now notice, I'm holding my brush with three fingers. 
I'm not holding it like this. I'm holding it with three fingers so that I have a light touch, very little pressure, and I want you to do this zigzaggy stroke, changing the direction of the handle of your brush. And you, on your upstroke and downstroke, go the direction that the handle's pointed. All right, go the direction that the handle's pointed. And now we're gonna add one more thing. When you do this, we're going to be, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to be going from right to left. If you're left-handed, you're gonna be going from left to right. But we're going to go against the bristle of the brush on half of the strokes. This is with the bristles, this is against the bristles. So we're going to be going with and against the bristle of the brush as we go across the painting. So just get a feel for that. Take a moment and just get a feel for the magic stroke. We're going to take just a small amount of white. We're going to take yellow ochre and we're going to take turquoise. And we're going to get somewhat of a green To that green, we're going to add a little bit of raw sienna, and we're going to test this color. I want it to be lighter and a little bit more burnt sienna, so I'm going to add some white touch of burnt sienna to it. And I'm looking for a color that's going to, there we go. We might even take a little touch of orange and put in there. I'm looking for a color that's going to work for my grass. Now watch my magic stroke. Every time you go to the palette, change your color just a little bit. All right? Now I've got some color here that's going to work for me. So now back, I'm not, I'm going to just start back here where I'm aware of some of that grass starting to come out onto the beach, onto the sand. Not too far back. Very light touch. You can start at some point, you can start throwing almost every color on your palette into this grass with reds, blues, purples, oranges. You see that? Very, very light touch. Almost every color in the, on the palette is eligible. As you, as okay, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna here. I'm going to take some of the cool red now. Cool red, a couple places. Raw sienna. Dark green. I'm going to take blue and the cool red, making somewhat of a purpley color, grayish purple. Now even a darker color. What do you think of that? See how that ties that together? Now I'm going to take some white, a little touch of orange. And I'm going to get some lighter versions of this back here in the distance some. 
I want some lighter versions in a few places back here. Maybe even a little more white. Okay, now I'm going to go real light with, with, with what's going to be maybe some, some dead grass. Oops, I'm not getting real light. But I want to have some just basically off-white grass in a few places. And again, this is something that we can come back and work on again tomorrow. All right. Now, questions? Does it look okay? Yeah. Do the likewise. <laughs>